Good Saturday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick weather update, keeping you advised as to what's going on with your midweekend forecast. And we've got a lot to talk about for tonight. Tons of information about what's going on with the forecast into the first week of school. We've got wildfires all over the western United States. But what does our weather situation look like here in the Mid-South area when it comes to burn bans and stuff like that? Fortunately, it's not as bad, but it is something that we have to keep a very close eye on. Coming up also, we're going to be taking a close look at what's going on with the tropics that have all of a sudden gotten to become very active. Not causing any immediate problems out there, but again, we are watching for the potential of some changes taking place. We've got again one storm system developing in the Atlantic that could become an issue later on this next week. We'll be watching that carefully. And of course, we've got Hector, a major hurricane in the Pacific Ocean, which may scrape very close to the Hawaiian Islands in the next several days. Now, it doesn't look like a direct impact right now, but it does look like that if you know anybody or if you're heading in that general direction, Definitely want to keep an eye on the forecast, and we'll help you do that coming up here in just a little bit. If you've never been here before, this is our exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime, where we update you as to what's going on with the forecast. If you can't stick around for the whole thing, we've got a ton of weather information on here. Just drop by the red bar at the bottom of your screen to where you can watch the forecast scrolling by, or you can pick it all up at wreg.com slash weather, and you get tons more information about the tropics and wildfire danger and all sorts of other neat stuff. Just scroll down below the forecast for more information there. Got uh, weather reports from around the area. Some of you getting rain and thunderstorms for tonight. Drop your location and whatever weather you're getting. You got a rain gauge amount. You got thermometer. You got wind speed, direction, whatever. Let's do some amateur meteorologist stuff and see what's going on into and around the area and show you a little bit more about what's happening out there. And if you got weather pictures, we'll feature them when you show them to us by Twitter, Facebook, Periscope, wherever you got a chance to send them into. Again, if you want to email them to me, great opportunity to do that at austin.onic at wreg.com. All right, enough chit-chat. Let's get going and show you a little bit more about what we're expecting in the next few hours. Still pretty toasty out there, and temperatures by early tomorrow morning only dropping into the mid-upper 70s, so not much of a change coming up anytime soon from what it looks like. But there will be that chance of an isolated shower or thunderstorm possible, maybe an isolated one overnight, but most of the activity I think should be wrapping up pre-midnight hours and then another chance of showers and thunderstorms as we get into the forecast coming up toward tomorrow morning and into Sunday. And if you have kids heading back to school on Monday, it's a good possibility this time you may want to get them some rain protection like a totable umbrella or something out there that might come in handy or a rain jacket just in case because we're going to be seeing more chances of showers and thunderstorms in the forecast over the course of the next several days. Thanks to everybody for the weather reports out there. This is what it looks like about half a continent away. The Ferguson fire has reached Yosemite National Park, and a lot of what you're looking here, half dome off in the distance, kind of difficult to see at this point in time because of all that smoke out there, but we're not seeing the same fire conditions here. More on that coming up in just a little bit. Beautiful sunset after a nice shower and thunderstorm passed through the area of Oxford, Mississippi tonight, in and around the area of the University of Mississippi. A few showers, a few thunderstorms, drizzle left over. Here's sunset from downtown Memphis. This is what it looks like from the cotton an exchange camera looking west toward West Memphis, Arkansas. Sunset officially was about 10 minutes ago and decent amounts of clouds out there making for a spectacular sunset view for this evening across the Mississippi River and downtown's Mud Island. But looking over toward the area around South Haven this evening, our Baptist DeSoto camera, I-55, you can barely see the traffic over there on the right-hand side and getting heavy amounts of rainfall, low visibility around South Haven, looking off toward Horn Lake in the distance and back off to around Nail and Church Roads that direction. Goodman Road traffic just barely visible through some of that rainfall right down there. And again, chances of rainfall continuing into the rest of the evening. We have no severe weather, but we will continue again to see the potential of more thunderstorms over the course of the next couple of days. So heading out the door and again for tonight, may see again the possibility of more showers and thunderstorms out there. And we'll keep our eyes on that one for the rest of the evening. Alice McGowie, Wyatt, Mississippi. Thunder and storms around the area of Wyatt, Mississippi. Thank you very much for that one. Ekru, Mississippi. Tommy Robbins, cloudy and 83 degrees. 
Thank you very much uh, for that one. Hot in Brownsville, Tennessee, Charlotte Jeter Gibson. Uh, appreciated uh, that report for there. Jonathan Barkley, nobody cares. Wrong, that's my job to care about the weather, but thank you for that report right there. Uh, hello from South Haven and everybody else checking in. Teresa Guess, hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, let's see, nothing in Bartlett. Carolyn Singleton Murphy, thank you very much uh, for that one. And everybody else who's checking in again for this evening. And again, could be some more of these out there in the course of the next several days. Here's what it looks like on Storm Tracker 3S radar as that thunderstorm complex moves its way from around Shelby, DeSoto County into Shelby County, right around the Whitehaven area. This is, again, where we see the potential of that activity going up right south of downtown Memphis. That's where we're picking up most of that lightning. Now, a lot of these thunderstorms, again, have been uh, developing, drifting, collapsing. These are technically called pulse-type thunderstorms when they behave that pattern. They're not sustained. This is not a huge, severe weather event taking place at this point in time, but it does mean, again, if you're outdoors, Anywhere within range of this storm, you could be struck by lightning. So please use caution. Let's get back indoors again and protect ourselves there. Hardly anything going on north of I-40 at this time, down to the south of I-22 and moving north of I-22. That's where we're getting, again, the heaviest amounts of thunderstorms in and around North Mississippi. But look at that area right just to the south of Holly Springs. Decent amount of lightning at first, but then the whole thing just sort of falls apart. And then more thunderstorms around Ashland, south of Ripley, down toward around New Albany and plenty of lightning striking far away from the parent thunderstorm. So we'll see more of that activity out there. That again shows that these thunderstorms, you can see a thunderstorm off in the distance and 15, 20 miles away, lightning can strike from that parent thunderstorm. So this is again a good opportunity to remember to practice good lightning safety. Also a thunderstorm around Somerville, close to around Hickory with Oakland, picking up a bit of a thunderstorm right now as that crosses Highway 64 on Storm Tracker 3S radar. And the heaviest cluster again, working its way through South Haven, heading up into southern Shelby County at this time. Uh, thundering in Bartlett, Lisa Hinton, a little bit of drizzle. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Chattanooga, Tim Gbo Broyles, say hello to my uh, good friend Ellen Nesheim and her family who live uh, over in that general direction. Thanks a lot for tuning in from the other side of the state for tonight. Lightning in Whitehaven, thunder and windy. Joyce King, thank you very much. Uh, for that one, Dark Skies and Lightning in Horn Lake, Mary Rice, hope I'm saying that correctly, thank you very much. Gully Washer in Blue Springs, Mississippi with some wind, Ruth McGee, thank you very much. And started raining in South Memphis, Tracy Jones needing an order for rainfall, Jana Lee Cumbrock, hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, from around Collierville. Thank you very much uh, for checking in on that one. Rest of the evening, again, temperatures a little bit on the toasty side. Let me switch over here real quickly to our rainfall amounts. And University of Mississippi really picking up a decent soaking tonight, well over an inch and a quarter of rainfall. So pretty heavy amounts of rain and still picking up the rainfall out there on live real-time WeatherNet 3. You can get this data on your computer. Just go to this website and click on the weather bug icon in the upper portion of the weather page menu and you can find out a lot more about what's going on very close to your particular area. Uh, Leeson Cannon Mergle, wind is not really a major problem so far according to uh, National Weather Service reports. Now, some of those storms out there, again, could contain some gusty winds at times, but we've had no indication of anything severe from the National Weather Service at this point in time, so definitely some uh, good news on that one. Hernando, Nanette Parrish, Watson, dark with thunder, no rainfall to talk about uh, at that location. Good news. Thank you very much for that one. And as of right now, we have had no severe weather out across the area, so that's good news at this time. Vivian Reed Burdett, 112 from Rancho Mirage, California. I think you win the award for the farthest viewer for tonight. Thank you very much for checking on in uh, into the area for right now. Ginny Brown Campbell, a little bit of rain in Shelby Forest. We'll work on that uh, for later on, but probably not going to see too much immediately. Here's what it looks like again into tomorrow. More chances of showers and thunderstorms, winds coming out of the south, and that's going to pop up again. More activity right on in through the rest of the day tomorrow. So if you have outdoor plans anywhere between dawn patrol and sunset, there will be that chance of showers and thunderstorms out there. Dwindling a little bit by News Channel 3 at 10 tomorrow night, and then that'll do it for the chances of rainfall out there for at least a little bit. But it's looking more and more as we go into Monday that we may see the possibility of more showers and thunderstorms through the day, 
not just in the afternoon, and that is carried out on the seven-day forecast uh, as well from this point in time. So we're going to continue to see that throughout the rest of the evening. Temperatures again throughout the rest of the day tomorrow should be pushing normals back in the lower 90s with those isolated chances of showers and thunderstorms just about any point in time during the day. Again, I don't think it's a washout. You might even be able to get in some outdoor activities, but I would be very prepared to get everything back indoors again, just to be on the safe side on that. Hot and humid for Monday, first day back to school for a lot of places. And again, showers and thunderstorms just about any point in time to and from work and school. So the kids might need that rain protection out there. Same thing for the rest of the week, lower to mid 90s until the cloud cover kind of starts blocking out some of the sunshine and we see some temperatures back into the mid to upper 80s as we head into the rest of this next week. Now we might turn off the spigot a little bit by next weekend, but chances of showers and thunderstorms right on into next weekend. If this holds, it could be a pretty good soaker, but if it drops the temperatures, I don't think anybody's going to have too much of a problem uh, with that at this point in time. So this is going to be not too much again to worry about that. Jeff Smith, thank you for washing your truck today in Henning, Tennessee. That worked out pretty well at this point in time. Steve Briggins, uh, we'll take another look at radar here coming up in just a little bit. If it's going to hit Tipton County or not, doesn't look too good for right now, but it could be, again, the possibility out there. Lisa cannon Mergle. Yeah, there could be some fog into tomorrow morning. We'll take a look at that coming up here in just a little while and see if there's any threat of that into tomorrow morning. Now, again, not the same situation as we see out west. Much drier, much more deadfall, a lot of fuel out into the Intermountain West and the coastal states. So tons of fire going on out that direction. But here in the Mid-South, we have no burn bans in effect. Arkansas has four burn bans in the southwestern part of the state down toward the Louisiana state line east of Texarkana in that area. And that's one of the higher areas for the potential of fire danger, but it's only about a moderate risk. Most of the state is pretty well soaked down, so it doesn't look too bad out there. Mississippi does not have any burn bans in effect, likewise Tennessee. So the burning situation right now, the wildfire situation, is nowhere near as bad as what's going on out west. We'll continue to bring you updates on that in the next several days. Two storm systems to tell you about. First one is a new developing system over the North Atlantic. It is dropping to the southwest, heading into the mid-Atlantic. And as you can see, it's going over some much warmer water. So we might see some strengthening with this in the next couple of days. We might even get a named storm out of it. But then it looks like in the longer range forecast, next weekend and beyond, it's going to loop the loop and then possibly head back up into the colder waters of the Atlantic. So this does not appear to be much of a concern. Meanwhile, if you're heading to the Hawaiian Islands, this could be an interesting storm system to be talking about here in the next several days. Hawaiian Islands over here. Hector is a major hurricane, winds of 125 miles per hour. That's Category 3. Anything over 120 is classified as a major hurricane taking place. Now, the main forecast is going to have it tracking just south of the Hawaiian Islands in about another week or so. A little too early to tell about what the effects are going to be on Hawaii. Looks like it'll be far enough south to where it is not going to be a direct impact. But again, this could shovel up a lot of moisture, a lot of rain, a lot of gusty winds, possibly a lot of heavy surf. So if you're heading out that direction for a quick back-to-school vacation, could be some effects taking place, so keep an eye on this. We'll bring you updates on Hector throughout the rest of the weekend and keep you updated as to what's going on. TN underscore WX, thank you very much for a nice sunset shot last night from around Carroll County at the Recreational Lake area. So thank you very much for a beautiful shot there. SSTF 102, beautiful view of some stormy skies around Lansing, Michigan. Thank you very much for sending that one in. And great news from Fayette County, Tennessee. Jim Jaggers heading out to both practice and promote Go Jim Go. His bicycle on Friday wandered off. Don't know if anybody stole it or if it just had an urge to go out and see the countryside. We're not too sure. But whoever found the bike made certain it got its way to around Bikes Plus in Collierville earlier this afternoon. So whoever was the kind-hearted and very straightforward citizen who dropped that off and got Jim's bike back to him, 
Thank you very much for doing that. Really do appreciate that. So very good news that the Stray Go Gym Go bike is back in Mr. Jagger's hand. So thank you very much for doing that. Got any pictures out there? We'd love to see them. Aonic underscore WREG3 on Twitter. Also all over the place on social media. So please give me an idea as to what you're seeing out there for your pictures. And we'll feature them here on our netcast. If you'd like to tune in for the weather forecast, drop by for more information with Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. And we'll keep you advised on that. All right, for those of you who tuned in just a little bit late, here's a look at what's going on with, again, Storm Tracker 3S radar. We do not have any severe weather taking place. We do have some thunderstorms, again, just south of the loop and downtown. Not severe. These are moving to the north-northwest. That's not weird. That's just the way the winds are blowing, pushing those storms and the moisture up off the Gulf of Mexico and away from that particular area. Taking a look at the bulk of the Mid-South, again, north of I-40, not much going on. The thunderstorms into and around southeastern Tipton County, you may wind up with a shower maybe around Mason, but it doesn't look like too much of anything happening here. South of I-40, we again have some thunderstorms, but they are not holding together all that well. Ripley back up toward Highway 72 west of Walnut, getting some activity there. And of course, the activity that's been moving across the state line into around South Haven. We do have a little bit more lightning taking place with this, but we do not have anything again in the way of severe weather. So definitely some good news on that. And we could see a few more thunderstorms here and there throughout the rest of the evening. But again, not seeing much of anything at this point in time. So not seeing a lot. Uh, Nancy Lee Laster, bring on... The storms, love a stormy night unless you lose the electricity. Yeah, that's uh, not exactly the best thing right there. So again, good opportunity to make certain you stick around there. Rock the Block going on in Atoka. Jeff Smith, thank you very much. Hope everybody stays safe out there. Lightning and Thunder in South Memphis. Tracy Jones at this time. Lisa cannon Mergle. no fires in Kerrville. None that I've heard of at this point. I uh, don't too know if that's around this area or out in California, so thank you very much for that one. Cameron McNeil, rain and storms Monday afternoon and evening. Yes, unfortunately, it looks like we will be seeing uh, the possibility of even more of that activity coming up as we go into the next several days, in fact. So good opportunity for showers and thunderstorms out there. Not everybody's going to get them, but we will see again that potential for more showers and thunderstorms across much of the Mid-South off and on throughout the next several days out there. So something to think about if you have any outdoor plans going on there. Again, plenty of places in the Mid-South picking up some decent amounts of rain, although it looks a lot lighter. Most of the storms have moved away from around the South Haven area on the Baptist DeSoto camera, so things appear to be quieting down here, but a lot more thunderstorms possible in portions of the rest of the Mid-South and throughout the rest of the evening. Could be some lingering thunder. Don't think we're going to be looking at too much of anything else out there. Coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10, Jessica Gertler will have all of the day's news. Megan Rice will have a busy day in sports out there as we get closer and closer to football season. And of course, yours truly will have more on your complete forecast and storm tracker 3S radar to see if there's anything going on out there that gives you an idea as to what's happening with the rest of your forecast for tonight. An update there. And don't forget to join me bright and early on News Channel 3 Daybreak tomorrow morning. It'll be a great opportunity again to see a little bit more about what's going on with your forecast before we go into CBS News Sunday morning tomorrow morning. Questions, concerns, ideas, suggestions, complaints, if you absolutely must, send them to me at austin.onic at wreg.com. I'd love to know what you think about our weather blog and how we can make it more of what you will tune back in for. So let us know if there's something on here that we missed that you would like to see more of, more satellite data, more climate data, whatever it is, just give us an idea and I'll send them on to Tim Simpson so he can uh, weigh the approval ratings on those and see if we can use it as an idea for later on. So please let us know what you think. Stay tuned for more on News Channel 3 at 10 and of course tons of information including your forecast available at WREG.com. I'm meteorologist Austin. Austin Onik, thanks for joining us for the early edition of News Channel 3's video weather blog, Weather Overtime, for Saturday night. Stick around for a lot more throughout the rest of the weekend with News Channel 3.